to give you a bit of a red line through my presentation, short introduction to EarlyCon, the grid parity on the horizon as we see it today, some few slides concerning uh, thin film technology, and as well on end-to-end -end manufacturing solutions. Early Consolar is around a six billion Swiss franc company, 2007, with around 20,000 people, quite uh, globally acting with 35 countries, 170 global locations, and we spent almost 300 million in R&D in 2007. Early Consolar is one out of six segments headed by a woman. It's the youngest one. Actually, Early Consolar was um, made a known independent segment by the end of the last year because we clearly see the need and also the uh, fast moving market in the solar industry. So we, we need to have a dedicated organization within EarlyCon. For us, the story started actually 14 years ago not directly at EarlyCon at that time, but at the University of Neuchâtel. Uh, the University of Neuchâtel is since quite some years a collaboration partner from us. And the um, activity started already in the 80s there, developing on amorphous and microcrystalline technology. But in 1994, Dr. Johannes Meyer presented first time a micromorph, so an amorphous microcrystalline tandem cell, at that time at above 9% conversion efficiency. From our point of view, that was really a start for this restart, I would say, for this technology. As some of you might know, particularly that one uh, erecting in this industry for, for years, um, there was once the, okay, there is the thin film technology that is going to be the future. And after, uh, after understanding the Stabler-Ronsky effect, it really slowed down this industry. And I think that was really a technology step where it start, started to come back into discussion. We see ourselves as a first mover in the thin film silicon market. Actually, in 2003, we actually opened a dedicated team developing on our commercial products the thin film silicon technology. In 2003, we opened an R&D facility uh, close to the uh, University of Neuchâtel. We opened an R&D lab uh, right next to it headed by Dr. Johannes Meyer and Dr. Ulrich Kroll. In the same time, we opened um, or we introduced 1.4 square meter infrastructure, development infrastructure, and a second site in Tripach as well in Switzerland. At this time, we sold as well a 1.4 square meter R&D tool to Short Solar at that time, already working since quite some time on the thin film silicon uh, technology as well. In 2006, it really started uh, on the commercial side that companies went to in thin film silicon technology using just single junction. And from my experience, five years ago when we started discussing that in our organization, there was a clear message from the market. If you don't have one euro per watt peak and 10% efficiency, you don't have a market. Well, silicon shortage show, changed a bit the name of the game, and we went actually with a single junction product into the market, even though we did not expect that uh, the customers really want to have it. So uh, we introduced 40 megawatt plants uh, at Schott and at Ursul site in 2006. So both are actually ramping up or fully ramped up by today producing solar modules. In 2007, there were several contracts followed where we really went one step further. So a lot of uh, interest went into not having single equipment, but getting a full end-to-end -end production solution. So basically from the glass in to the uh, completely done modules out. And in the same year, we introduced first time as well, Micromorph Tandem. So the next generation of efficiency and the first contract and quite some followed went directly in the same direction. So within this year, Going into next year, we are going to see Micromorph tandem modules going into the market, coming out of mass production. What's our mission? We want to be a leading supplier for product and fab solutions for PV manufacturing industry. Now, equipment and processes is something which has been done in the semiconductor and in the displays industry as well. Where we have at the moment a different approach is we add additional services 
and that's the process integration and ramp up package, leading actually to a guaranteed performance. There's actually something as well, which was a need from the market that customer asked, well, can you go a step further? And we further developed our competence to really be able to supply not only equipment and hardware, which is able to do thing layers really nice and uniform, but also go that far that we really guarantee performance. Now, how do we see getting to grid parity? I think everybody agrees there we have a common understanding. We got to get to grid parity. Otherwise, it does not make much sense. One example, as we see it, as an, uh, on, based on California and uh, Spain, there are actually two parts to the equation, not looking at the subsidized market. Still, this is uh, quite an important factor. But not looking at uh, subsidies, there is the conventional energy prices, somewhere between 20 and 30 cents per kilowatt hour uh, on both sides, a bit more or less depending on sun hours, and they're going to rise. We assumed 2 to 3.5% per year. After seeing latest uh, developments, I would even expect that, that this figure could rise even more. On the other side, there is uh, the solar energy cost, and they are clearly still too high, no doubt about that. But they are coming down quite rapidly. I'm expecting that these numbers will come down quite fast. From our perspective, going into 2010, and that was actually also the question before 2010, we will get into, I would call it, grid parity zone. I do not think that there is one single pound of grid parity. There is a quite variety of getting competitive. And that is going to start from our point of view 2010, going further into 2012, 13. These costs will even come further down. 